Hey, this is Julie, and I'm going to demonstrate variable scope in C++. First, let's review what variable scope is. And the scope is just the lifetime of a variable or a constant. So when was it created? When is it destroyed? And which parts of the program have access to it? I began my program for variable scope by including the IOStream library. I also started the main function, and I'm going to add a variable to main for cats. And I'll set cats to five. And then I'm going to create a function for the cats. It's not going to return anything, so its return type will be void. I'll just call it cat function. And inside this function, I'm also going to have a variable called cats. But here, I'm going to have three cats. So main is a function and cat function is a function. These are two separate functions. They don't share data. They both happen to have a variable named cats, but these variables don't have anything to do with each other. I'm going to add a line to display the value of cats in each of these functions, and then I'll execute the program. All right, so let's execute the program and see the number of cats that's printed by main and the cat function. Well, it looks like I have a problem. Only main printed a number. And why is that? Well, I never called the cat function, so the cat function didn't execute. So, Let's go ahead and put a call into the cat function and try this one more time. All right, that should fix that problem. Now the cat function is executing and it shows that it has three cats, which makes sense because I initialized that variable cats to three. And the main program, even after the cat function ex the cat function executed and returned, the cats in main still are five. So these two variables named cats are independent, have nothing to do with each other, and the value of one does not influence the value of another. And that's okay to have the same variable name in multiple functions. And that does not cause any problems. But now I'm going to create another part in this program that works with two variables with the same name, but in a way that's not a good idea. I'm going to create another function so that I can keep this code separated from the rest of the program, and it's going to be called flower scope. And just to make sure I don't forget to call this function, I'll add a function called a flower scope right now to main while I'm thinking about it. All right. Okay, inside flower scope, we're gonna have two variables with the same name. I'm gonna begin by creating an integer flowers and I'm going to set its initial value to 10. And we'll display that back out on the screen.
All right, so far there's nothing very interesting in this function. We have one variable and we're displaying its value. But now I'm going to create a code block inside of this function by creating a for loop. So with my for loop, I'm first going to define an iterator variable, i, and its scope will only be the for loop. Once the for loop ends, iterator i goes away. We're going to execute this for loop five times and increment iterator each time. We iterate through the loop. Now I have another code block. The inside of my for loop is a code block and the function flower scope is a code block. So I have a code block nested in a code block. And what I'm going to do inside this for loop is I'm going to create another variable named flowers. This time flowers is going to be 100. And I'm going to even multiply the flowers. And then finally display the value of flowers on the screen. Let's do, let's do i plus 1. I'm going to put a number in front of it and keep track of exactly what's displaying. All right, that should do the trick. So what I have inside this for loop is one, I created an iterator variable i. And that's a very common thing to do and there's no problem with that. Once the for loop ends, I can't reference i because i no longer exists. I also created another variable named flowers. This variable will be, will be created each time the for loop iterates. So it's only valid for a current iteration of the for loop and I will create this variable flowers five times. And each time I will initially initialize it to 100 and then I will multiply it by two. This variable flowers is different from the other variable named flowers. And this is a very confusing thing to do in a program. It can easily create bugs and make debugging very difficult. Additionally, once I'm in my for loop, I've really lost access to the other variable flowers because when I reference the name flowers, it's going to assume that I'm using the one in the for loop. Once this for loop finishes executing, I'm going to go ahead and print the other value of flowers once more so we can see whether or not it was modified. So I'll call this function. We'll see that flowers has a value of 10. We'll call the for loop, which has its own variables. It'll iterate five times. And then I'm going to display flowers again. And so what I can see from the output is my first flowers had a value of 10. Inside my for loop, I doubled flowers each time I was in the loop, but I'm doubling one that was brand new. I created a brand new one and I doubled it. I got out of that iteration, got rid of those flowers, and the next time in, I got 100 more flowers and doubled them again. So the variable flowers, int flowers, inside the for loop, its scope is just one iteration of the for loop. The scope of the iterator variable is the entire for loop. And then the scope of flowers on line 14 is the function flowers scope. Now once the for loop ended, when I went to display flowers again, its value is unchanged and I can see that it is still 10. So this is a very confusing thing to do and would be a bad practice for you to put in your programs. So when we work with multiple variables with the same name, it's fine if they're in separate functions because they work independently. But inside one function, we don't really want to create a variable nested inside one code in one code block nested inside another code block. 
with the same name. That's too confusing and error prone.